Hi, welcome to the second part of the snow system tutorial where we'll be focusing on enhancing our snow system to make it a bit more pleasant to look at. So stick around if you want to learn out how to do that. Okay, so in the last one we had our four materials here. And what we're going to be doing is going to just be making some changes to these materials and then just sort of affecting the rest of them with it. So we'll be really doing quite some copying and pasting. So I'm going to open my snowflake lit material and what we're going to do is going to make some changes using linear interpolation and a bit of maths and all that fun stuff. So what we're going to do is first we're going to interpolate our speed. So what we need to do first is get our particle speed and we're going to use all this to affect the opacity of our snowflake. So we want our particle speed and then we want a parameter. So I'm just holding S and left clicking and we're going to give this parameter a value of 700 and name this particle system divide. Now you might be thinking why 700? Well let's say value I got when dissecting Unreal's particle system demo in the cave and it seemed to work out as the best really so that's what we're going with. And then we need a divide node, particle speed in the top to divide it by our 700. And then we want to clamp this value between 0 and 1, which is already set up as the minimum and maximum values here. Because obviously our, our opacity can't go past 1, which is full opacity, or below 0, which is no opacity at all. And then we need our lerp. So if you type in lerp, you'll see all this weird stuff comes up. But we want the maths node, the linear interpolation. And we're using our clamp speed as our alpha. And our red channel as our A. And our green channel of our texture as our B. And then we need to multiply this by a few values. So hold M and left click to get some multiply nodes. Put this into A here and this into B. And for A up here, we want our motion blur. So we want particle motion blur fade in the particles. And in B, we actually want an alpha value using a mask. So we want a lerp node, a linear interpolation node again. And in this values here, change A to 1 b to 0 and then the alpha we're going to get from our mask. So we want pixel depth into a sphere mask node. So we need one of those. So we want a sphere mask node into pixel depth into a and then we want a scalar parameter which we'll name 0. Leave it as a value of 0 and put that into b. And then we actually want to change the radius and the hardness of this to around 1200 for the radius and about 10 for the hardness. And use this as our alpha. Okay. And then the final thing to do is just multiply these two together and place that in our opacity. And when we click apply, and we'll just clean up any unused nodes as well. That's what this button does. As you can see, the closer we get to our snow particle, our snowflake, the more it fades. So that's just one thing we needed to do. Now we're going to affect the base color. So with the base color, we want our particle color, not vertex color, particle color. So we want a multiply node and we want our RGB node into A and the same for this one from our snowflake and then we need another where we're going to put this into B and another multiply node which we're going to put into A and what we're going to put in this multiply node here are a couple of colors so if you just type in three vector and get this constant three vector this is going to allow us to choose an RGB color which we can multiply into A and B like so so in the top one, go for white, click OK and let it update, it's going to update, just give it a moment. And that's going to be our snowy snowy colour. And then what we want is just maybe a little bit of a tint of something, maybe a little tint of blue. 
Click OK and that will update as well. And then we just multiply these two colors together and put that as our base color and click apply. And now we can use this material in the real world. Well, in the game world. And obviously as our unlit snowflake here is just the exact same but unlit, what we're going to do is instead of copy and pasting all that, which is just not a good idea anyway, duplicate our snowflake unlit material, snowflake lit material, sorry, change it to unlit M2. So when we delete our snowflake unlit M, which will be the first one, we can choose to replace it, any references we've used with this new material. And click OK. So what's this done is when we go into our particle system now, you can see it's got our snowflake unlit material still here. And in the required, it's got that new one we made. And it also has obviously our snowflake lit material. So that's just easily replaced the references there. And for the snow particle, we're going to do very similar to what we did with the snowflake. So for the snow particle, what we can do is we can get our snowflake gradient graph here. Left click and drag, copy it, and then just paste this into your snow particle. And what we have to do is now we have to change a few references. So I'm going to drag this radiant gradient exponential and bring it down here. And again, I know all of a sudden this looks really messy, but just trust me here. Instead of using this texture sample, what we're going to use is our Radiant Gradual Exponential. And we're going to put this into the A and B of this lerp, and this into the B of this multiply. Multiply this into our base colour, and take this and place it into our opacity. And we can just delete that other emission reference. And now if you want, you can tidy this up a bit so it looks a bit neater. But what that's done is it's allowed us to recreate that exact same material, but for our snow particle instead of our snowflake, which again has saved us a lot of time. And with the last one, we can just duplicate this snow particle, rename it to unlit M2, and then delete our original unlit material one. And we can replace this with our unlit particle M2. So we just got to find that. Snow, par snow particle unlit M2. Replace references. OK. Save. Now in our snow, we'll just check everything here. Uh, just ignore this at the moment. It's still compiling some of the shaders. So we've got squares just falling. But we'll notice required snow particle unlit M2 for our snow particle unlit. Snow particle lit for our snow particle lit. Snowflake lit has snowflake lit. And snowflake unlit has snowflake unlit M2. And now when we spawn all this in, as you can see, it's first off got rid of that horrible mess of motion blur from when they were up there. And now the opacity of the snow is less when it's closer to your character. So if you had a bit more snow falling around you, you'd be able to still find your way through the game whilst the snow is still heavy. And what we're going to do is take the intensity of the light down, click play, have it fall. Now we've turned the light down because you expect it to be a bit dark when snowing anyway and it allows you to see the snow much better. And as you can see, we still have that very nice white snow just behind this faded snow, which we can see in front of our character, but it's not A, too in the way that it's gonna distract the player, and B, you can't see any, more, any of the sprightness really, which makes it look a bit better. But this is how you create a much more updated snow particle system to use. If you wanted to use this in an open world game, then my suggestion would be to load up your character and what you do is add a component and you can add a particle system component 
which you could bring just above your player. Choose your snow system. And then if we delete this from our game, from the actual level, then if we just go into the lo initial location and just bring this down a bit to about a thousand, a thousand, minus a thousand, minus a thousand, and do that for all the locations. Those need to be minus. So a thousand. Oh, I copied that. A thousand, a thousand, a thousand, and minus a thousands. And finally, for the last one. And we can also take down our spawn constant. It's maybe even less than this. And now, as you can see, the snow is in this small area. However, it is going to follow our player wherever they move. So it's always going to look like it's snowing in the distance. But in actual fact, it's snowing right in front of the character. Now I think I reduced the value at which it spawns just a little too much. But you get the idea anyway. It's also probably a bit low on the character, so you might want to bring it up quite a bit more. So it actually looks like it's coming from the sky rather than the character's head. So again, that's how you now create the snow to follow the character. So I hope you enjoyed this series for creating snow in Unreal Engine 4. If you did, leave a like on the video. If you didn't, leave a dislike. If your opinions are otherwise, if you have any comments, questions, suggestions, or advice, just leave it in the comments down below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And as always, don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more. Thanks guys. Bye. P.S. I also know I forgot to include the snowflake texture in the last video. So if you want to check that video out now, there will be a link in the description to that now. Thank you.